Hello, good morning, everybody. Um, I am up earlier than I intended to be and thought that I would take this opportunity to make a video since I haven't made one in a few days. I will be honest with you, I skipped ahead some on um, getting some of the actual work and sculpting done on my piece. Um, I didn't really feel confident with where I was going to go with it. So I wanted to get a basic idea. So I put some clay to it. I will show you guys one day how I did what I've done so far with my clay. But I do have a, a peacock started. I'll turn it a little bit so you can see what I've got going on so far. Um, the problem that I have is that when the clay dried, it shrunk just a bit. That's just simple science. Every clay will shrink a little bit, even if you don't notice it. It's just because water takes up volume, and as water evaporates, it loses volume, so it has to shrink a little bit. Uh, but Das clay has a tendency to shrink less than other clays, which is great. Um, it's one of the reasons I love Das so much. So I do most of my pieces in DOS, and it is more costly, but it's worth it to me. You can really end up using way more clay than you anticipated um, going with other brands because of the shrinkage. And not only that, but as the shrinkage happens around your armature, it creates problems with the integrity of the piece and the, the strength of the piece. I actually had a piece one time that was almost completely done. It was in the stage that I was painting it. And I went to pick it up, and only the amount of pressure that it took to steady it in my hands, the whole thing crumbled in my hands. And that was not with Das Clay, that was with a different brand, and I was mortified because it took so much for me to sculpt it to begin with. So, I started looking for better brands, I came across Das, and here we are. Um, I'm going to show you guys what I do when I'm filling in the cracks they tend to happen at the seams where you're taking clay and merging it together um and again it's solely due to shrinkage but what i'm doing is i took a tiny ball of clay and that's probably more than what i need i'm going to dampen the surface and this is another reason why i love dust is because you can dampen the surface some and as long as you're not oversaturating it um it doesn't ruin the structure it's 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 paper reinforced it's reinforced with fibers from paper and basically you know i'm not a very scientific person but the protein structure from those paper fibers will bond together and that reinforces it a lot more than just um a earthen clay you have to realize that there are different um, categories or classes of clay. One of them is earthen, which means that it's basically primarily like a mud mixture um, with some other reinforcers, but um, it's almost entirely just like earth, you know, earth-based clay. And just realize that it, it's more than like more than likely essentially mud which you know if you make something from mud it's going to crack um it can't handle a lot of pressure it's going to crack so as you can see I'm dampening the surface and working my clay into it it's okay if the clay goes beyond it as long as you dampen your surface you probably don't have to dampen the clay itself um, you don't want it to be too wet when you're doing this either because you want to be able to smooth it out when you're done. Another thing that's a good tip is take, when you take your clay and you get your clay, work it into your fingers for a minute. That little tiny boost of warmth will soften up the clay in your fingers a little bit and make it easier to conform to what you're doing. So again, I'm going to dampen with some water. I'm actually going to take some of this here and smooth it over the neck. That's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to take this, look, I'm going to rub it in almost like a pencil eraser over it. Just rub it in real good. 
and it works into those little tiny holes. You see how it's turning kind of almost muddy? It almost, it, all, it, it almost reminds me of um, red earth clay, but DOS is paper reinforced, and that's the difference. It has the texture of an earthen clay, as long as it's not a really old batch. If you're unlucky and you come across an old batch, the texture is off and it's weird. It's not quite as sticky on your fingers as an earthen clay. Like I can do this and I'm not pulling the clay up like this. Like with an earthen clay, it would, it would have a crown now for me doing that. So it's not quite as sticky, but it sticks to itself really well. And I do wear gloves most of the time when I'm sculpting because I just don't like my hands to get messy. I'm a princess. So remember to knead it in your fingers or even in your hand if it's a bigger piece or just hold it in your hand for a minute like that just to get a little bit of your, your body warmth to transfer to the clay and it softens it up, makes it nice, really nice to sculpt with. <clears throat> so I'm going to just take, I just dipped my finger in. Um, I'm not scooping water onto it and pouring. I'm just, I just dipped my finger in it. Cause again, if it's too wet, it just won't do what we're trying to do. So I'm basically treating this more or less like spackle. Um, and I realized that I have an audience that's all over the world. So, um, wall putty is another word for spackle, I believe. Um, and I'm, I'm just treating it like that. And my fingers are the putty knife or the spackle knife that you would use to spread it. And that's how I'm covering in my cracks. So get a nice smooth finish on it. And this is not something I usually have enough patience to bother with. So a lot of my sculptures have some lumps in them. It, they, they look homemade and not factory made because I leave some of the lumps in them because I don't have the patience to fool with it. And sometimes I do decide that allowing some of those lumps to remain um, really gives it that, um, oh, fine art, um, homemade art look as opposed to um, looking like it came off a factory line. We're in an age now where that's not appreciated as much anymore. Everybody wants to, you know, get rid of every lump and bump, and everybody wants to have that perfect smooth finish. And for me, sometimes I like leaving an imperfection in there because, you know, art is not perfect. It never was designed to be so-called perfect. It's perfect when you feel you're done. And someone out there is going to agree that it's exactly what they wanted. And be interested in the piece. And if they're not, that's okay. Because you you feel like it's exactly what you wanted. Um, one tip I can tell you is, as you can see, my sculpture is covered all the way around from front to back. So I allowed it to dry. The bottom is the only thing that didn't dry yet. And that's because the bottoms take longer to dry anyway. But I allowed it to dry before turning it like this. Because if not, then the clay is going to collapse under itself and flatten um, in a place that you don't want it to flatten. So you have to be patient. A lot of sculptures are not going to be done in one day. I mean, this one's probably going to be another week to two weeks out before I finish it. And that's another thing that I wanted to point out is I'm a student full time at, at, at school. Um, and I also work full time. And that doesn't leave me a lot of time to do the things that I want to do. I'm actually right now showing you guys something that I want to explain. Um, I'm covering a rather large groove. And I'm going to treat it the same way that I treat my 
uh, my tiny cracks, only I'm going to obviously have to use more clay and smooth it out more. So it takes a lot of practice to get this down right. And actually, um, if you look at me on Facebook, you'll see that I've several times expressed my frustration with not being able to cover lumps and bumps. This has been a big evolutionary process for me as a sculptor. I hope you can see everything too. Um, I obviously don't have a super fantastic studio with a cameraman. So I hope that the angle is okay that you can kind of see what I'm doing. I would rather use more than I need when I'm covering my, my lumps and bumps. And then as I'm smoothing it out, pull, you know, pull any excess off afterwards. That's, that's better than doing too little, in my opinion, because we want instant gratification and I'm no exception to that. I kind of want it to finish sooner than later. And if you go too little, then you're still going to have a groove to fill in. Um, later on after it dries. And we also have to account for shrinkage. And I'm hoping that I'm using enough on this little area here. I'm going to dampen that corner there. If you have a seam that just doesn't want to go down, just take your water and dampen it right at the seam. That should fix it. As you can see, I now have a very wet sculpture again, and it was almost completely dry when we started. But I'm, I'm really trying to smooth this out a little bit, some round them out a little bit, I guess. I've got a couple more areas that I need to fill in, but that's the process. All you're doing is redampening the, just the top part, the top layer of the clay so that you can get a nice bond between the clay fibers that are on the piece and the clay fibers that you're going to add to the piece. Because um, the clay is molecularly designed to bond to itself easily. Um, any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And if you like my videos, if you find them helpful, then please like and subscribe to my new YouTube channel, um, which you're watching now. And I will talk to you guys later on.